Hi everybody. Today we're going to talk about organizing your patch and using presentation mode. This is a version of the Additive Synth patch that we worked on earlier in the semester. It's purposely pretty messy. Uh, and as you can see, it's quite difficult to follow what's going on. Um, so it's actually really important to spend time organizing your patch, especially as the patches get increasingly more complex. First thing you want to do is make sure that your signal flow is easy to follow. We can see the signal patch chords right here. This is a common thing I've been seeing a lot of, is an easy DAC somewhere above or kind of spaced randomly in the patch. Um, I always like to have the signal go from top to bottom. It just makes things a little bit easier to follow. Um, I also find it really, really helpful and easy to keep things uh, vertically and horizontally organized a little bit. So just by nudging these things a little bit, the patch makes a lot more sense. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, um, but you can see now that you have these four signals coming from these four amplitude envelopes. Um, these multiply tilde are multiplying the signal. We have four sine waves. Uh, main frequency control right here that's being multiplied by two, by three, and by four. Then we have a preset control that's being controlled by the key object up here. Uh, and that preset is controlling the multipliers of the overtones. Um, it's controlling the shape of the envelopes uh, and the duration, which is being controlled by the set domain right here. And then at the very top, we have a case slider converting MIDI to frequency. That float is being sent to this frequency control, which is then being sent to every sine wave. Um, and then a bang is being sent to this button right here that is triggering all of the envelopes. So when we push this something on the K slider, it's automated. Everything sends the frequency, multiplies, uh, the frequency is multiplied for each overtone, and it's triggered. This should all be review. Um, I'm just demonstrating, if you didn't know how additive synth worked, uh, by organizing the patch, it would be much easier to follow the logic and the organization of what's going on. Now, a couple things to take into consideration. First of all, as patches get more complex, um, I really recommend you start using send and receive instead of having patch cords flying across the screen. This one isn't bad, but um, I'll demonstrate if we had like a, a dozen of these or even like a hundred of these oscillators, then it would get really cumbersome. So there are two kinds of sends and receive. You have a send and then an argument. The arguments between the send and the receive have to match. And then you also have, of course, send, receive. Um, even though if these were both given the same argument, they wouldn't cross because this is sending messages and this is sending signals. But I like to keep everything separate just for clarity. So right here, we have a bunch of signals going to the same place. This is a perfect uh, instance of candidate for using the send tilde. Uh, and then let's call this the... Um, synth. We can give that whatever argument we want. Um, now, I always like to, when I use sends and receives, I always like to color code. You can go option, uh, object color. You'll get this little color menu. Um, or if you select the object and go to the inspector, you can change the background border and the text color. Um, really, both of them are, are valid. Um, I just I use this one more for whatever reason. Uh, so we'll change the background color here to, let's say, uh, green. So you know that the signal of uh, every partial in your additive synth is a green box. And what I like to do is just duplicate it so they're all the same shade of green. And then down here, receive. Synth. Again, this has to be the exact same argument um, or it will not work. And beautiful. So now this also gives you the added advantage that if you wanted to duplicate this many, many more times, um, you wouldn't have to then reconnect this patch cord to the gain control every single time. So it's also really good for scaling your patch up. Um, again, this one has a tilde because it's sending and receiving a signal. Uh, we should do the same with our frequency, the duration, 
and might as well do the same with the trigger since they'll all be going to the same spot anyway. Uh, in this case, we do not need a tilde. We can just say send ADSR. Again, the argument is uh, arbitrary. And let's make this uh, blue. I guess that's the border. That works just fine. A little bit lighter so you can see what's going on. Um, and everything, we're going to put receive ADSRs. on all the ADSR envelopes. It's pretty simple. This might seem tedious, it might seem unnecessary, but I promise you um, it helps a lot. It cleans up the patch. A clean patch is easier to follow, much more logical. Um, so we basically then take a look at everything that's being sent to the ADSR, the set domain message and this trigger, and we just connect it here instead. That means that all of these patch cords can now be deleted. And all of a sudden, the signal flow makes a lot more sense. OK. Uh, and then the last thing we want to clean up with the sends and the receives is the frequency. Um, you can also use S instead of right typing out the entire word send. Um, that works just as fine. It's just a shortcut. So we're going to send the frequency here. And then receive the frequency right here. And select multiple patch cords by clicking Option and uh, selecting a portion of the screen. You can delete all these. You can have one for the fundamental as well. Um, again, for me, when you use sends and receives, it's really important to color code. Right now, you might know exactly where everything is, but in a month when you return to your patch, uh, it's much harder to follow the signal flow of S send and receive objects than it is of patch cords. So just be really careful of that. Be wary of it. Okay. Um, now the preset object in this key stuff, it's a little bit sloppy. Uh, and we'll get to that when we deal with the presentation mode. But for now, uh, the sends and the receives, they look, uh, they look pretty good. Um, <clears throat> we have our case slider here. That's triggering this button, our set domain. Um, again, I like to always have the flow of data top to bottom and usually left to right. Uh, this is something I've seen a lot in your patches, a key object attached to a select and a bunch of numbers, um, but no instructions whatsoever as to what key triggers what. So when you're doing this, always add a comment that says, um, press, at least that says what letters uh, or keystrokes these are and what they do. Okay, in this case, I have caps, one, two, three, four, control presets, one, two, three, four. Um, as I mentioned before, I always like to use the caps for triggering using the key object so that you're not inadvertently triggering things when you're typing and when you're programming. Okay, please do this. It's very, very helpful. Um, and just saves everybody and you and you know it'll save you time in the future. Uh, it's also really important to clearly annotate your patch. Okay, this one's pretty simple. We don't need to write in all the details, but as your patch grows, be very very clear as to what's going on. Uh, this, for example, is the multiplier of the of each overtone series. So this is the uh, first overtone or the second partial. Um, overtone two. Overtone 1, sorry. Uh, overtone 2, overtone 3, etc. You can do that um, however you like. Now, once things have been cleaned up a little bit, um, 
something you would want want to be aware of this patch isn't very cpu intensive but occasionally if you're using a lot of buffers and uh, live processing and things things might start lagging a little bit um, so something to be careful with is how much cpu is being used if you go to options and audio status right here you see we're using zero percent of cpu it's not very intensive at all but if this peaks and goes up to like 30 or 40 50 60 percent it might start slowing things down and you can try to identify which object is using the most cpu if you go to um i believe it i thought it was object CPU usage. Oh, view. Show CPU usage. Um, and then over here in the max window, you can see which objects are um, Uh, average CPU usage was 0.46%. And then it shows which objects are using the most CPU of that 0.46%. So this sign was using 1.46 of that percentage. You know, as long as this total is low, that's perfectly fine. If this was really high at like 60%, then you'd want to take a look down here at which of these are using the most CPU. And this will help you identify which part of your patch needs to be streamlined. Often it's also the graphic user interface of things that are that look fancy and that you know kind of uh, have a nice uh, GUI not necessarily that but some of these plugins and beep objects often use a lot of CPU and they can be streamlined a little bit um, anyway once you have your patch well organized and everything under the hood is working fine what you then need to do uh, and I would highly recommend that every patch you send out off into the wild you do this is to prepare it for presentation mode Uh, this is a very important way of just clarifying and making your patch as user-friendly as possible. Um, we can, of course, oh, sorry, I also forgot to mention, we've looked at this before, um, aligning patch cords, route patch cords, just makes them a little bit smoother. Um, you can also, of course, color code your patch cords um, by selecting Let's say we just want to see everything that's leaving our preset object. We want it to be a uh, bright purple patch cord, just so we know where all that is going. Uh, this can be, again, helpful just to visualize a stream of, of data. Um, anyway, once all that is set, then you want to start thinking, what exactly do I need to see in order to perform with this patch? So something, the things that would be really useful to see, obviously, the K slider so that you can click and select your pitch. You might want to be able to see the button. You want to see these ADSR envelopes. You probably want the gain slider and the easy deck so that you can turn things on and off. Probably also the uh, preset object. So what we can do is select. I'm just shifting and clicking on everything that would be useful. Okay. And then over here, uh, click on include in presentation. Okay, then they'll have this little pink halo around them. And if you were to click on the easel down here, everything else except for these things disappears. Okay, um, and now that I'm thinking, I actually probably also want to see these multipliers. I'll include these in presentation as well. Um, I'll include this little comment indicating which buttons to press. Um, and I think that's it. So in presentation mode, you still have a locked and an unlocked patch. When the patch is locked, it's how you interact with it. Uh, but when it's unlocked, you can actually then rearrange these things. So this will be the second partial, the multiplier of the second partial, of the third partial, and of the fourth partial. Now, if you want to quickly align them, you can select a bunch of these objects, arrange, uh, distribute vertically, Oop. 
distribute horizontally. I don't know. I never really use that feature. Um, align top. Okay, there we go. And then just align. I don't really know. It doesn't really matter. Um, basically, you want to clean this up to however you think would be the easiest way to use the patch. Now, you can rearrange everything however you want. And when you leave presentation mode, it'll go back to normal. You can also add additional comments and say, for example, this actually doesn't need to even be very big. You can say right here, uh, play pitches. You can say <clears throat> caps one, two, three, four, control presets one, two, three, four. And you can make this preset object only four uh, units wide. You can have these be the four envelopes. So this will be the fundamental um, one, first overtone, second, and third overtone. Um, command J to shrink the comment box to the size of, uh, of the text. Um, and then that's it. It's much easier to... And you can still interact with it however, however you like, just as if it was not in presentation mode. But it's just much cleaner, much more user-friendly. If you're writing something that will be sent off and performed by somebody else, this is often the best way to go. Now, we've added a couple little comments in presentation mode that weren't in the original. So when you go back to the original, you're going to have this stuff kind of randomly um, scattered around your patch. I like to have just a sort of little uh, presentation mode holding area where all of the little additional um, things that I add in presentation mode that are not necessary for the patching are just hidden off into one corner. Again, when you click on presentation mode, it all goes back to exactly how you arranged it. And then in patching mode, you'll see all this stuff overlapping right here. Uh, you can go much deeper and actually color code all these things. Um, you can use the panel object, which I think is often very useful for separating sections. Uh, so it's the panel. Okay, and it's just a colored uh, screen panel, basically. Uh, you can click on include in background uh, and change the, you know, the color, color code and do whatever you want with this thing. Um, and then when you put it in the background, all it does is it delineates really clearly um, what these are the envelopes and then this will be, uh, you know, your pitch control or whatever and gain. And, you know, if someone is totally unfamiliar with Max, click, you have to be really clear about your instructions. Um, and again, this little panel, when we're back in patching mode, just stick it in your presentation mode holding area. Uh, and it's that simple, okay? Uh, this might seem like a unnecessary step when you're preparing your midterms and your finals, but I guarantee it will make things go much smoother. If you're trying to troubleshoot this patch during a rehearsal, it's much easier than the patch that we started with, where wires are crossed and it's not clear where the signal's moving. So sometimes taking even 10, 15 minutes to clean everything up uh, and then having thinking carefully about trimming everything that you don't need during the performance um, can make things go a lot smoother. Um, as usual, email me if you have any questions uh, and have fun playing around with this.